Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt, a photographer based in Northern California. And today we're gonna to be talking about something a little bit photography adjacent, and that is battery packs. And we use these things all the time in our family. I use them for photography. I think that's why I initially bought one. I used it for camping and hiking and backpacking and photography adventures. But we quickly found that these things are pretty useful in just daily life. So we bring a charging block with us when we go out on walks with the kids just to make sure we have energy or whether we're just going out on an adventure or something like that. It's just a really easy way to charge stuff. And we found it kind of worked into our lives and became just a staple, basically an outlet that we took with us everywhere we went. So I've had this one for four years now. It's an Anui model, I'll show you right here. And that J is for my wife actually because I bought one for her and that's the only one that we we still have the other one I've lost so I've used this one a lot and the folks over at Anui actually reached out and they said do you want to try our new model and so I thought this would be a fun activity <laughs> something I really like doing actually which is comparing devices and using data to do so so I picked up this little guy here which is a USB digital tester and I thought it would be fun to compare the new one with the old one in terms of their capacity and how quickly they can take a charge and give a charge to our devices. All right, so we're gonna be doing a head-to-head -head between these two. This is the old model here. It's the B1B5. It costs $30 now, which is an incredible bargain, and it is a 74 watt hour battery pack. This one is the new one. So this is double the price, it's $67. It's called the Cougar, the P63E1, and it's a 100 watt hour battery pack. So that's about a 33% or is almost exactly a 33% increase in capacity. You can see the battery packs, just the look of them. They are designed a little bit differently. This one is a thinner and little bit lighter pack, though they're both about a pound. It's longer and thinner. I actually like kind of the form factor of this one a little bit more. It's a little bit more um, slender and just easier to fit into your pocket. This guy's just chunky. It's a little bit thicker and not as tall. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter that much, but they are different in their size and shape. Um, the other thing to note about these is their ports. So you can see here, the ports have shifted. So if we look at them, the old guard, the old version, had one in or out USB-C, USB and then two out USB-B or A. These are the more old school plugs, and it makes sense, they've transitioned, they still have three inputs and outputs total, but they've moved to be dominated by USB-C, which is the you know primary plug that I think most devices have now, including a lot of laptops. So the new one has one in-out charging plug here, which is um, a USB-C, and then it has an out USB-C and an out USB-B if you still have those types of plugs. So I think that's like a good you know movement here and transition between the two products. The other thing to note is this older model does have a flashlight, which is kind of cool. It's an LED flashlight and you just double click on the button on the side and it turns on the light. The new model does not have that. You can click the button and the only thing that will do is it'll tell you the charge you have on the device. So first thing we're testing is do the devices have the capacity that they're supposed to have? And the way to test this is pretty simple. You empty the battery pack, just run it out until it's 0%. You plug it in and you see using this device how much energy is transferred back into the battery before it's fully charged. So the older pack is supposed to be a 74 watt hour pack and it actually took 77.83 watt hours. So it took more charge than its stated capacity and that's after quite a few years of use. So that's really encouraging. It's holding its capacity well and this device is basically brand new as far as what how much energy it can take. So basically, exactly what it's supposed to take. The new one is supposed to, it, it's interesting, they market this as a 100 watt hour battery, but then when you look on the back, it says it's only supposed to be 
0.25 watt hours. So my first reaction to that was, oh, that's a little bit disappointing. But then when I actually plugged it in and saw how much it could take, it took 104 watt hours. So way more than the amount that it's supposed to take. And the reason why that kind of matters is because in the United States and the EU, there is a maximum capacity for battery banks that go on a plane without special approval. And you might have guessed that that maximum capacity is 100 watt hours. So this battery pack, even though it is stated as 100, which is right at that threshold, it actually took a little bit more than that. So that's good for the consumer um, and you're getting more than what you're paying for, I guess. So the next thing I did is I wanted to test how quickly the batteries could take a charge and how quickly you could recharge the battery because that's pretty important. So for the old one, it was supposed to be able to do a fast charging capability of 22 watts and it did 18. So a little bit shy of the target, but not too bad. At that rate and at that capacity that we just tested, that means this battery can charge in four hours and 20 minutes. Next, I tested the newer battery, and the newer battery posts much higher specs. So it was supposed to be able to get 65 watts, which is more than almost three times the maximum of the other battery. It didn't hit 65 watts, but it hit 62.75, which is honestly very, very good. So even though this battery has a 35% higher capacity than the original battery, it takes the charge in an hour and 40 minutes compared to two, four hours and 20 minutes. So that's pretty amazing, right? When you think about that, that to me justifies the newer battery on its own, which is that you can get higher capacity in the newer battery, so you're getting more power and you're also able to charge it in less than half the time. The next thing we wanted to test was the inverse of the charging the, the rates of the blocks and instead look at how quickly they could charge something else. So the way I did this is I plugged this into my laptop, which is a MacBook Pro that can take up to 120 watts of flow um, for charging. So in this case, uh, that exceeds whatever these could possibly do. So we're not limiting the test in any way by the device that we're charging. The older one did 20 watts, um, which is pretty respectable. It's basically the inverse of the flow rate into the battery that we just saw. But the newer one is where it's pretty impressive. This thing did 85 watts when charging my laptop. So even more than it could take in, it can put out, if that makes sense. And that's really impressive because that's over four times the flow of power into the device that you're charging if, you're, if your device can take it. So if you're charging a laptop, it's gonna charge four times faster with the new block than with the old one. And honestly, I think that in itself is probably enough to justify the upgrade. So the last thing I wanted to check is how much power these things can transfer to other devices. And you might have thought, well, it's a 100 watt battery, that means it can give 100 watts and that's its capacity. And that's not really true. It's sort of the dirty secret within the lithium ion world, or at least from a marketing perspective. This is a 100 watt hour battery, but it's only rated to put out 80 watt hours. And that loss is due to heat and heat dissipation and conversion factors. I'm not an electrical engineer, so look elsewhere for big definitions on what those things are. But for our purposes, what it means is these things are not what they're labeled as. They're about maybe 80%, 70, 60% even in some cases of the capacity of what they're rated at as far as we care about as consumers for charging our equipment. So to test this is pretty simple. I plugged them into my laptop again and instead of checking the rate at which they were expelling energy, I checked the total amount of energy that was transferred before the battery pack died. Of course, after fully charging the battery pack to 100%. Now, there's an interesting thing here, which is that Inui, the company that makes both these devices, on their website, they say that the actual capacity of the device, or expected capacity, is about 60% of the rated capacity. So our 100 watt hour battery pack should only really be able to deliver about 60% of that, so 60 watt hours. However, I, I didn't really see consistent messaging or labeling with that 
on their website and the devices on their own. So if you look at the actual device here, it says in this older model, 74 watt hours. The newer device says 91.25 watt hours, but then it says the output capacity of the device is about 80 watt hours, which is clearly not 60% of 92. So something is a little bit off here, and I just wanted to get to the bottom of like, realistically, what can these devices do? So for this 74 watt hour battery pack, the output capacity was 49 watt hours. So if you go by the Inui website and you say 60% of 74, well, that's 45 watt hours. So our 40, 49 here that we observed is actually exceeding the expectation of 45 watt hours. So that's pretty good. Next, I tested the newer model, which is the 100 watt hour battery. Now, if we go by what's on the battery, we're expecting 80 watt hours. If we're going with what's on the website, we're expecting 60 watt hours. And this one was able to deliver 78. So more consistent with the labeling, it did meet the output capacity that was expected of the device based on the labeling on the back. So that 100 watt hour battery can deliver 80 watt hours, but it is inconsistent with what's on the website. So I don't, I don't really know how to take that, but basically just keep in mind these devices, their output capacity is not the same as their rated capacity. And so it just exacerbates any differences you see in these. So functionally from a charging perspective for charging your devices, this older model is a 49 watt hour battery and this newer model is a 78 watt hour battery. So much larger than you would expect in terms of the capacity differences between these two devices. So thanks for watching the video today and I hope you appreciate the comparison. I love doing data com driven comparisons like this using um, data when we can. So I hope to make more of these in the future and wouldn't mind uh, reviewing more battery packs, frankly, if there are folks out there that want to send them to me. So this is the older one. It's perfectly fine. It's still functioning after four years. It's still keeping the same charge as it was supposed to. So all those things are great. If I were choosing between the two, and uh, I am, because this one's definitely going back to my wife, I would choose the newer one. And I'll tell you why. It's $30 more, so there is that factor. But what you're getting for that is four times the charging speed and the output speed. So you're gonna charge your devices four times as quickly if they can take the charge. And you're also getting um, almost double the capacity of the battery. So we're looking at like 80, watt hours on this one compared to like we said 70 or 47 on this one so i i personally think the newer one's better i think it's worth the extra money but both of them are great and i really appreciate the folks over at anui for sending this my way so i could test it and keep it for my use because i'll definitely be using it going forward